Hi, I'm George, and in this Coral Fish video, I'm going to be myth busting seven of the most commonly believed myths in the reef aquarium hobby. There's so much information out there that sometimes you just don't know what to believe. Here are seven myths, misconceptions, or commonly confused ideas that are often thrown around the hobby. Myth number one. Zero nitrates and zero phosphates are good for your tank. Although it is ideal to shoot for zero nitrates and phosphates in your tank, oftentimes aquarists will see negative results when achieving these parameters. Corals actually need some phosphates and nitrates to feed off of. If you go with a completely sterile system, you're slowly gonna kill your corals. I try to keep my phosphates barely above zero at a reading of 0.03, and the same with my nitrates at a reading of two to four ppm instead of zero, which will produce good coloration and growth. Myth number two, bristle worms are bad. Most people have been taught when they see bristle worms to completely freak out and try to kill slash remove every single last one of them. It turns out that they're actually great scavengers and as long as they remain small and there's not an unsettling amount of them in your tank, they can be one of the best cleanup crews possible. The myth stands true when they get too big. You've all seen those really scary photos of them. When they get that big, you definitely want to remove them. They can then take out your fish, your shrimp, and your other tank mates. Myth number three, that you need to have X amount of anything per gallon. The first one associated with this is the one pound of rock per gallon rule. Now, some people think that a certain amount of rock per gallon is required for successful denitrification. However, the pounds per gallon saying can actually be misleading because it's more about the type of rock you get. The metric should actually be based off of the volume, the weight, and the size of the rock. For example, five pounds of brick is gonna have a very different effect on your tank than five pounds of a more porous rock like Fiji rock. The other one associated with this is the X watts per gallon is required to keep certain corals. Stronger lighting can produce faster coral growth and coloration in some corals. However, this is not the only contributing factor. For example, a very low watt LED light can produce more PAR than a high watt metal halide light. Now you are gonna need a certain amount of light to get a good start on keeping your corals healthy. However, coral placement, flow, and lots of other factors do matter besides the watts per gallon rule. Myth number four, smaller reef tanks are harder to care for than bigger reef tanks. I actually preach this a lot to beginners to avoid smaller nano tanks when first starting out, which there is some merit to. It's really hard to keep a small tank because the water parameters can fluctuate so easily for example, one drop of poison would affect a five gallon tank much more than it would affect a 500 gallon tank. Well, actually they would both crash, but you get the point. The myth comes into play when people say that smaller tanks are harder to care for than larger tanks, which is technically not true. Considering if you have a larger tank, that means you need to have larger equipment, which is gonna be more expensive. Um, you have to do larger water changes. You have more rock, glass, and sand to clean. So it's definitely a bigger time commitment. Larger tanks definitely come with some awesome advantages, such as being way more forgiving, but you're gonna need to weigh this against the commitment that they come with. Myth number five, the reef aquarium hobby is expensive. I'm just kidding guys, it is a pretty expensive hobby. The real way to phrase this one is that buying the most expensive equipment will give you the best results. That is a myth. The prices that our equipment run for these days is getting absolutely crazy. And a lot of you guys out there believe that the most expensive equipment will definitely give you the best results. The truth is that I know plenty of people who have the coolest tanks, many of which I've featured on this channel, that use the simplest and bare minimum cheapest equipment. Like I said, nothing fancy. I don't have no uh, expensive setup. Everything is cheap. It's just I try to keep everything stable. Uh, that's the key. Many successful reef tanks run lighting and skimmers with low initial costs and then upgrade later on. Myth number six, garlic cures ick. Garlic has never been conclusively proven to cure marine ick. Many people will report that they've used it and their fish have gotten better, but these are not controlled studies. Just as many people have used it and their fish have ended up dying. The reason many people think it works is because it has been proven to entice a fish's appetite. And so when you take a sick fish who hasn't been eating well or regularly and you supplement that garlic with its food, 
it's definitely more likely to go for the food, eat more of the food, and oftentimes then get better. And the final myth, which isn't any more special than the others, is myth number seven that fish will grow to the size of their tank. Tank size is not the limiting factor when it comes to fish growth. It is a limiting factor, but it isn't the limiting factor. One way to describe this is that in a larger tank, water parameters are more likely to be stable. Thus, the fish will likely be healthier and grow to be larger. But tank size is definitely not the only factor. And if you want your fish to outgrow your tank, the best way is just to understand its specific requirements. And that does it for this video, guys. I hope I helped put all of those reef aquarium myths to rest. If you disagreed with anything that I mentioned in my video, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. I'll be ready to argue with you. I'm sure a lot of other people will be ready to argue with you. We can all have one big ginormous fight down there. I don't even care. But uh, if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out a couple of my other most recent videos. Remember to keep those nitrates low, guys. George, out.